All right, thanks for watching, and it's time for a very nice spherical coordinates exercise. So let's evaluate the triple integral of the function z, where e is the following region. It's inside this object and out above this object. So, and for those spherical coordinates problems, I think the key thing is really to draw a nice picture. So let's draw a picture. So in this case, in the XYZ plane, or XYZ region, and first of all, let's figure out what all those objects are. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, that's just a sphere of what radius? 1. If you had 4 here, you would say 2. And because you have a sphere, that's already an excellent indication that you have to use spherical coordinates. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Also, what is this? Well, if you square this, you get z squared equals x squared plus y squared. So what this is saying is the higher up you go, the more and the larger the radius. So you have a little thing that starts at the point and you expand it out. Well, what this is, it's precisely a cone. And not only that, notice the square root, it's always non-negative, so it's really just the upper half of a cone. So in other words, it looks like this. So that is z equals square root of x squared plus y squared. And what we want is just a delicious region in between the two. So this is our region E. In other words, the, um, this delicious ice cream cone in between. And by the way, you could do this problem without spherical coordinates, but it becomes much, much easier if you do it with it. All right. And now the next step is we need to figure out where rho is, where theta is, and where phi is. So we need to bound our new variables. And for this, we just need to write everything in terms of our uh, spherical variables. So, what this is saying, it says the radius squared equals 1. So in other words, rho squared equals 1, which just becomes rho equals 1. So, the sphere, in other words, has a very nice um, representation in terms of spherical coordinates. Now, for this one, it's kind of interesting because you could either plug in the formulas for uh, spherical coordinates or just think of it um, more um, geometrically. Remember, you have this vertical angle or what I call a vertical angle, which just tells you the angle of opening. In other words, how much do you have to go down starting from the z-axis to actually just get that cone? And think about this as follows. If you hear your angle is zero, if you open up until you hear, it's perpendicular. So the angle of opening in that case would be pi over two. Well, that cone, which is the standard one, kind of goes halfway in between. So it's not zero, it's not pi over two. Well, it's just pi over four. And this is the equation of the standard cone. Okay. Or, as I said, just plug in the formulas for spherical coordinates, and at the end, you should find that. You should find something tangent of phi equals 1, and so phi is pi over 4. And by the way, I believe physicists, they use theta for this, but here, because it's a vertical angle, and because the bar is indeed vertical, you get phi. Okay, so that's already very good. 
So we already have a bunch of inequalities here. So picture inequalities. And by the way, I call this the pi m method because you start with p, like picture, then i, like inequalities, and m, like math. So now let's figure out rho is between what and what. Well, again, rho is just the radius or the radius. So what it is, it's between 0 and the maximal radius, which here is 1. So between 0 and 1. And in phi, we already discussed this. The smallest angle is 0, and the biggest angle of opening is from 0 to pi over 4. And lastly, what is the horizontal angle? Well, it's just how much you have to turn this horizontally to get the whole ice cream cone. Where here you have an angle of zero, and notice you have to turn it really 360 degrees, or pi over two, to get the whole cone. And sorry, two pi to get the whole cone. Pi over two would just be turn it a quarter way, that would be in the first octet, for instance. So theta is from 0 to 2 pi. And again, someone on YouTube gave me this fantastic mnemonic. Well, let's start with 0. If you want to turn it horizontally, you put a horizontal bar to get theta. If you want to turn it vertically, you put the vertical bar like phi. Okay, and that's wonderful. Now all you need to do is integrate the function z with respect to dx, dy, dz. What this becomes, you put your new inequalities, d rho, d theta, d phi. Rho is between 0 and 1 theta between 0 and 2 pi, and phi between 0 and pi over 4. What is z if you do, I mean, you have this video on derivation of spherical coordinates. In terms of spherical coordinates, z isn't too bad. Rho cosine of phi. So, of course, it's harder than z, but again, notice how nice those variables are, those bounds are. And lastly, we just need a Jacobian, which in this case is rho squared sine of phi. Which, if you want, think of it as rho, the radius, times the little r in polar coordinates, which becomes rho sine phi. So if you multiply both of those together, you get rho squared sine phi. And the nice thing is you can separate everything out. So what this becomes, it's the integral from 0 to 1 of rho times rho squared. So rho cubed, d rho, times. Well, the integral from 0 to pi 2 pi of d theta, which just becomes 2 pi. And lastly, the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine phi, sine of phi, d phi. And last but not least, you just have to evaluate that. So what you get then is, if you want, rho to the fourth over four, from zero to one, times two pi, Okay, this one, you have two ways of dealing with it. If you want, use the u sub, u equals cosine, or u equals sine. I think u equals sine would be easier. Or if you think about this, it almost looks like the derivative of either cosine phi or sine of phi. So it's cosine squared or sine squared of phi. Well, if you differentiate that, you get 2 sine of phi times cosine of phi, 
which is the expression here, except for a factor of 2. So again, you would get 2 sine of phi, cosine of phi. Well, to get rid of the factor of 2, just divide by 2. So it's 1 half from 0 to pi over 4. And then you just evaluate that. So here we get 1 fourth. Here we get 2 pi. And then 1 half times. So sine of pi over 4, it's 1 over square root of 2. And then you square this minus 1 half times 0 squared, which gives you 0. So in the end, what you have is just this expression. And well, what we get is the 2 cancels out, and then we get pi over 4 times 1 half, and I believe this gives you pi over 8. Let me just double check. Yes, this does look correct. And this is again the triple integral of the function z. And notice this became much easier because our bounds are much easier here. So this is one thing about spherical coordinates. It's super hard to visualize and kind of hard to find the bounds. But once you found the bounds, everything else becomes much easier. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.